Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alexander Silvey and this is the third installment, or will be the third installment, of the RNA-Seq tutorial guidelines for Dr. Pedro Miro's Biology 792 class, the Spring 2019 University of Nevada, Reno. Okay, so last time I failed to mention, but this is the paper that we are using, and here is the protocol as well as all of the code that we've run so far. So we ran HiSat, and it gives some descriptions, map the reads of each sample to, to the reference genome, um, sort and convert SAM files to BAM, and then here we are, we are going to be starting on step three, using string tie to assemble and quantify expressed genes and transcripts. So we'll be assembling the transcripts, we'll be merging all transcri the transcripts from all samples, We'll examine how the transcripts compare with the reference annotation. I know this is optional, but I threw some code in there to do that. And then we'll estimate transcript abundance and create table counts for volume. Alrighty. Scroll back up here. This is where we're going to start. Just a brief recap. We used this piece of code to obtain our files. This piece of code. Um, extracts all of our files, we ran HiSAT, we sorted our SAM files and created BAM files, we indexed our BAM files so that we could get BAM.BAI index files, and we will start here. So I said next time we'll add to this tutorial and continue with our indexed.BAM files to view them in um, the Integrative Genomics Viewer. So, here are two pieces of code that we can run to install IGV and IGV tools. IGV tools is helpful when you're creating primers or other, or other things like that in IGV. So we can just run quickly run this piece of code. I've already installed IGV. I just want you guys to see what it's like. And if you're using Mini Condo once again, I have some pages up here real quick. So all I did was search install BioConda, clicked on this, brought me to this page, come down here, click on the Mini Condo link, download the bash script, the bash installer, or you can download packages and installers. If you really want to, if you're on Windows, you're going to do an exe installer. So this is like a uh, assisted installer. I'm on Linux, so I downloaded the bash script, simply ran the bash script, and installed the miniconda. Came back here, set up my channels, specifically bioconda. So this is the bioconda page. Set up the conda forge. And now I can use Conda install to install anything. BWA is another um, alignment tool along with Bowtie. Yeah. So I really think this is extremely awesome and it's very easy to use. As we can see, you type Conda install, what do you want? Boom, this solves it for you. And true to this, I'll throw up IGV tools as well. Like I said, I've already installed these, but for learning sake, we'll just throw them in there. Okay, so that's Bioconda. And Miniconda, and you can get this super awesome Conda command, and you can install pretty much anything that you want. Program wise, at least. Okay, so. It lets me know that, hey, that's already installed. So, let's run this piece of code. And open up IGV now. I'm just going to run that for us. It's going to connect here. Alright, here's the IGV, or the Integrated Genomics Viewer. We are working with HG38. It should pop up and it will only have HG19. Click here. 
and just come down here, hit OK. So we're on HG38, we're going to scroll down here to chromosome X, file, we're going to load from file, so this is where I keep all my BAM files, I'm just going to load this BAM file, if you do not have the indexed BAM file, this BAM file will not load. So make sure that you've indexed your BAM files. All you need to do is click on this one, open, and I'll load that guy up for you. So we're a little far zoomed out. Let's zoom in a little bit to see our alignment in class. So the, each of these individual blocks are reads. So these are individual reads and they tile them together. Um, we can zoom in further, 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 further. And we can see when they start tiling, we can start to see the sequence. And it'll even give you the translated protein sequence as well. Then we can just zoom in, zoom in for this. And they Oh, there's a G, there's an A, there's a T. So this is pretty cool. We can zoom back out too. Um, the view. So these are all our tiled arrays, or our tiled reads. Okay. If we click on this, we can open this up a little bit, and it'll give us some different isoforms. Um, you can also create TDF files. And load them in here, throw them up. But yeah, so that's how you view your BAM files in IGB. I thought I'd give you guys a sneak peek of what that looks like. And if you're going to be using large RNA seq datasets, this is an extremely good way to visualize introns and exons and how well your reads mapped to our reference genome up here. Alrighty, we're going to exit out of this now. Shuts it down. And we're going to move to assembling our transcripts, so our BAM files. We're going to use all those individual reads and we're going to send them, assemble them into long reads. And so I have opened the string tie kind of manual right here. And let's go over what these mean. So dash P is the number of threads to use as usual. I'm using 11. Dash G is the input for the guide GFF. So this is the reference annotation to include in the merging. And then so this is our guide GFF or G T, yeah, guide GFF. It's located in chromosome X underscore data genes. Chromosome X dot GTF. Dash O is our output path slash file name for assembled transcripts. So here we have a single transcript um, or a single RNA seq read transcript experiment right here. And we're going to output that to a GTF. Dash L is the name or prefix for the output transcripts. So here's our prefix. And then this is our input file right here. So if we come over here to my string type underscore assemble bash script, I've assembled a bash script, or I've made a bash script that'll pretty much automate this for us. So if we come down here, we got a nifty little bash script that will automate this step for us. So essentially, if we run this bash script, it will take all these samples and create our GTF files from them. So it will assemble all those reads together into full-length transcripts. So let's check out what that is. All right. Bash. Stream time. Assemble.sh. We'll run that. Jump over here to HTOP. We're using 
all 12 threads right now, 11 of them are being used by this per this uh, command alone. There's our string tagging, so we're going down here. Once this is done, I'll show you guys that we indeed do have our .gtf files. Takes a minute. I think in the protocol it says it takes approximately 15 minutes. We'll put that to the test today. All right, so we're done running that script, and as we can see, we have now the GTF files. Ta-da! Cool. Alrighty, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so using string tie, we're going to merge all the transcripts from all samples. So using this command right here, string tie dash dash merge. So once again, let's view our manual. So string tie dash dash merge. We'll merge all of these. I know it doesn't show it in here, but if we go to our protocol, this is the command that they use. Once again, P is for the number of threads. All right, ha, ah. ha, ah. right here. Number of threads to use. Dash G is our guide GFF, our reference annotation which once again will be our chrx.gtf file dash o is our output file so default is the standard out but just like up here we want to create a new file called string tie underscore merged dot gtf and our chrx data slash merge list is going to be a text file here. Let's go down here. So here merge list dot text is a text file that has the names of the gene transfer format files created in the previous step with each file name on a single line. So include that as well. And this is just a single piece of code. All we need to do is run this. And let's come back here to our terminal. I'm just going to paste that right on the terminal. I'll leave these linked in the description below as well. So y'all can just copy and paste and follow along as with this video. So I'm just going to hit enter there. Ta-da! Runs extremely quickly. And here we go. We got our string tie merged. GTF file. So now this is the part of the transcript where we can examine how the transcripts compare to the reference annotation. We're going to get a bunch of output files, but for our purposes only, we'll be looking at the. Well, I'll show you guys what the annotated.gtf file looks like as well as the stats file. So Let's generate these files really quick. This is how you're going to install GFF compare. Conda install GFF compare. It's going to do its thing. And like I said before, I've installed all these previously. And I'm just reiterating this for learning and teaching purposes. request packages already installed no updates so I guess that is a good point to make when you run these con install commands if the package is outdated it will update the version of the package if it's completely up to date you'll get this 
pull request packages already installed. All right. So now let's let's come back up here and let's see our GFF. Here is our user manual for GFF compare. And let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so dash r, gff compare dash r, is the reference annotation file, which will be our dot, our chromosome x dot gtf file. Dash g, where is dash g? Doesn't seem to have dash g in here. I assume dash g is much similar to this dash g, where we have a guide gff, meaning this is our guide gff, our guide gtf file. I mean. And dash o, I'm assuming, is our output prefix. So I guess this is our dash o. I wonder where our dash G is. Let's read real quick. Interesting. Well, let's see if we can find it in the paper. This is C box one for more details. Scroll back up. Box one. So dash G option tells GFF compare to compare all transcripts to the input transcripts.gtf file. There you go. Even though the even those that might be redundant. So the dash R is followed by the annotation file to use as a reference. There's that dash G for you. So we come back down here. This is our piece of code. I said the dash R is our reference annotation. Dash, dash G tells it to compare all of that reference annotations to our merged file. Aha, dash O. So every output file that we get is going to start with merged dot something. There's our dash O. And then our input file is our string tie underscore merged dot gtf. There we go. I remember. All right, let's run this piece of code and see what we get. It's going to run super quick. Ta-da. Here are all of our merged, 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 merged outputs. Like I said, the gt.gtf ref map, gtft map, tracking, not really super interested, dot low side, not really super interested, but I'll show you about these merged.annotated gtf and merged.stats gtf files. Look like. So we can open this guy up, and we have our chromosome, our assembler, our transcript, which is an exon or intron. If we scroll down, actually, it's just all of our exons, I guess. And there's our reference genome. Start positions, stop positions, strand location, positive or negative strand. And then we have a brief description of what this gene is, including exon numbers, transcript IDs. So that's a pretty cool file. 
And then we're gonna open our merge.stats file. And this kind of summarizes our command right here. What did we get? What was our output? So we have all of these levels of sensitivity and precision, as well as did we miss exons? Do we have some novel introns? More novel introns, miss loci. Query mRNAs, we have 34, almost 3,500 in, corresponding to 1,500 loci. Our reference mRNAs, there's about 2,000 in, corresponding to about 1,100 loci. So yeah, this is just kind of a really good summary um, file for y'all. If you need it, the other files, I'm sure you will do something with if you really need them, but for our purposes, we aren't going to need them. Alright, so now let's estimate the transcript abundances and create table counts for Paul Gion. So if we come down here, so we're going right here, estimate transcript abundances and create table counts for Paul Gion. They have you enter in these one by one, and that's all fine and dandy if you'd like to do that, but personally, I like to automate things. So, created another little nifty bash script that will automate that entire exercise for us. And if we go back to our string tie manual, dash E, over here, let's only estimate the abundance of a given reference transcript requires dash G to be included dash B if we look at this it should be right here is enable output of ball gown table files which will be created in the same directory as the output GTF requires dash G once again and dash O is recommended dash P as we have stated is our number of threads We're going to use 11 threads. Dash G is our guide GFF. And for our guide GFF this time, we're going to be using that merged file that we created. Our string type underscore merged dot GTF. Come down here, this guy right here. Dash O is our output. Output path slash file name for these simple transcripts. So these are this is our output path and our output file names. .gtf. We're going to create a new ball gown directory with a directory of your sample name, one of these guys, as well as our sample chromosome x.gtf file. And this is our input files, our dot bam files. All right. So, without further ado, let's run this script. So, bash string tie underscore abundances, and we'll run this guy up, and we'll generate. directory with all of our GTF files in the format like we were saying using dash B we'll enable the output of Bolgion you know, table files which will be created in the same directory as the output GTF and I'll show you guys what those look like momentarily so our bash script is running. We'll jump over to HTOP, show you guys it's working on it. Come back here, because it'll be done in a couple seconds here. Oh, also, oh, there it is, and we're done. One sec, let me show you guys this first. Okay, so we've created our ball gown directory. Let's open that guy up. Here are all of our files, or our file names, 
actually, pardon me, our sample names created into their own directories. Let's just switch into the first one, one, the first one, 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 eight, eight, zero, four, four, and show you that here's our output GTF with all of our table files that we will use in ball gown, which will be done in R, not from the command line. So we're going to drop back down, we're going to open this guy back up, so here's our ball gown um, directory with all of our samples created as directories with all of the GTF files as well as the table files located inside the corresponding sample name directory. We've generated our GTF files and we've merged them and ran some GFF compare, created some stats files, created some annotated GTF files that we can refer back to one day. So now I'd like to talk about installing ball gown using Conda. So this was not as intuitive as Conda install ball gown. So Bioconductor is a bioinformatics kind of repository or yeah let's go with repository for R. So it has a bunch of different R programs as well as different things that you'll need um, to run these packages in R. So it wasn't as intuitive as I thought it was going to be. I originally had just typed in conda install ball gown. It said, hey, you don't have the required packages or the syntax, whatever. So I just did a quick install ball gown conda. So it came down here. So bioconda packages bioconductor ball gown. This is the code that worked for me. I'll run it here to show you guys. Show you guys that this worked. And if this one doesn't work for you, there are two other commands that you can use. And one of these three commands should work. So for me, just collected the metadata. It's going to solve the environment now. Done. And like I said, all the requested packages have already been installed. So, once again, just another great use of Bioconda, which is a um, package in Miniconda. So install Miniconda and have the world at your fingertips, essentially when it comes to downloading and installing bioinformatics tools in a very timely fashion. So once again, my name is Alexander Selby, and this is the third installment of the RNA-Seq tutorial guidelines for Dr. Pedro Amiro's Biology 792 class spring 2019 at the University of Nevada, Reno. I will link these um, bash scripts in the description box as well as I will link I'll just paste, copy and paste this into the description box so that you guys can have kind of a step-by-step -step guide as you're going through um, this tutorial as well. And as always if you have any comments, questions, or concerns hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you. Once again, I'm Alexander Selby. Thank you for watching.